you know, I want to step back a second and talk about Stagwell because a lot of leaders are very nervous in this environment, it's very polarized, you know, the whole red state, blue state. First of all, I love the fact that the way I see it described is always challenger network, you know, sort of challenger group. Well, challenger to what? Tell us a little bit about kind of what, what's the model and, and what are you disrupting? Well, we try to be the Tesla against the GM and Ford in the, in the advertising industry. We are the digital first, data oriented, transforming marketing group that really is taking on majors that have been in place for 40 years and really slowly trans transitioned over to the digital marketing world and reluctantly so, mm. and have billions and billions of dollars of useless uh, legacy assets. So we think we're more nimble, we're more data oriented, uh, we have third generation creative, and we're, we're really combining them together in a way that modern marketers are finding well. That's the right combination of targeting, of data, and creativity that really works. And so we're taking them on. And I think that, that now when we go into pitches, we're almost exclusively pitching against the big four. We're never pitching against uh, a mom and pop shop otherwise. And that's why we're gaining share. What's your message in terms of what are people um, perhaps getting wrong in terms of the approach, uh, the dumb money? that they're trying to reach consumers right now, you know, in terms of you're in the pitch room, pitch me. I think that first you gotta understand what kind of product you have. If you've got a mass product like Coke, you should be sponsoring the Olympics. Don't do all this targeting stuff. There's still efficiency in that kind of marketing. If your diaper, if you have only three million women giving birth and, and one million already has a child so they know what diaper they're using, you gotta find two million people Right in a 45-day period, you need a first-rate data operation mm -hmm. that finds who could be your customer and floods them with information in that particular time. And that's what modern marketing is about. Modern marketing went from having big tentpole events, a Super Bowl spot, a couple of broad things, into finely targeted marketing to reach your consumers with appropriate advertisements and advertisements that get them right to the finish line. They don't, don't just give them brand advertising for the store. Get them to your website. Get them buying now. Right? And, and that, I think, is what customers want. And so our operation is built to do that, to understand your customer funnel, <coughs> understand how you can increase loyalty, and understand how you can bring new customers in through these digital signals that they put out. So talk a little bit about the platforms. Let's go to the obvious one, Twitter, where I know there's been, I don't know if it's an exodus of advertisers, so I'd be curious about that, but certainly a lot of talk about um, its attractiveness and under the current regime of Elon Musk's ownership. What do you think? Well, I'm really surprised about people saying that Twitter is now unattractive. Twitter has been unattractive for a long time. It's been a total sewer. It's been the single worst place on the internet for years. That's why Elon Musk is taking over with Jack Dorsey's rollover investment, I might add. So the, the, everyone knows that Twitter mobs became kind of oppressive uh, elements of, of online. So I don't know why people were advertising there before, right? Uh, now I think uh, people are taking a wait and see attitude. I think that uh, Elon Musk has developed the electric car against all odds. He's put satellites in to create a, a Starnet uh, internet. He's launched spaceships. I think he can handle Twitter. I'd have confidence that he's going to get to a, to a good product. Advertise, first of all, Twitter advertising wasn't that much to begin with. It was right. less than, you know, maybe so 1%. He was wrong with, so the, he was wrong to blame the activists? Because that was one of the things he basically said, you know, all the activists have been pressuring advertisers to pull out. Is, is that giving too much, basically, power to activists? Uh, no, I, I don't, I'm not saying that he is wrong about that. I think that that's, there's a huge activist notion that he's going to open up Twitter and it won't be as favorable a place uh, for activists and it will be more open to conservative speech. But they're creating this notion that, that he's creating kind of a hellscape. It was a hellscape, <laughs> okay? I think he's gonna kind of break the, bring this back to being a more reasonable medium and uh, he, he's, he's done some remarkable things. Uh, I think it's okay for advertisers to take a wait and see attitude, but I think, you know, three or four months down the line, I think he will build a new product that is a healthier product for both the country and